Good morning. I'm Reb Myron. I'm a minister through Pathways of Light, and I've been a Course in Miracles student for 40 years. This year, I'm going through the lessons, asking Jesus for clarity, <clears throat> and then I'm writing what comes to me from that clarity, and that's what I'm sharing with you today. So let's get started. I'm looking at lesson 107. Truth will correct all errors in my mind. Paragraph one, what can correct illusions but the truth? And what are errors but illusions that remain unrecognized for what they are? Where truth has entered, errors disappear. They merely vanish, leaving not a trace by which to be remembered. They are gone because without belief, they have no life. And so they disappear to nothingness, returning whence they came. From dust to dust, they come and go, for only truth remains. The split mind is the error. We seem to live in a world separate from each other and from God. This is simply a hallucination of the split mind. The ego thought system allows us to maintain this illusion in such a way that it seems real. In spite of all the pain and suffering that comes with this illusion, the idea of specialness has kept it going. The truth will set us free, and the truth is available to us as it is in our mind as well. This doesn't happen all at once because we need to be convinced that we want the truth more than we want our specialness. That's what these lessons are for. Paragraph two, can you imagine what a state of mind without illusions is? How it would feel? Try to remember when there was a time, perhaps a minute, maybe even less, when nothing came to interrupt your peace, when you were certain you were loved and safe. Then try to picture what it would be like to have that moment be extended to the end of time and to eternity. Then let the sense of quiet that you felt be multiplied a hundred times and then be multiplied another hundred more. And now you have a hint, not more than just a faint, faintest intimation of the state your mind will rest in when the truth has come. Without illusions, there could be no fear, no doubt, and no attack. When the truth has come, all pain is over, for there is no room for transitory thoughts and dead ideas to linger in your mind. Truth occupies your mind completely, liberating you from all beliefs in the ephemeral. They have no place because the truth has come and they are nowhere. They cannot be found for truth is everywhere forever now. All of my life up until a couple of years ago, I suffered through the days. I didn't realize how much I suffered until I stopped suffering. But in retrospect, it was pretty bad. When I found the course, things started getting better, but it took many years for me to fully accept it. Each year, I studied and practiced A Course in Miracles. A misery lessened, my misery lessened, until finally I shifted into something else. The difference was unbelievable. When things unfolded in an unexpected way, I no longer felt upset by the change. When things were uncertain, I no longer felt anxious about it. <clears throat> I felt love and peace nearly all the time. This is still mostly true for me. What I discovered as time went on is that my mind is not completely healed. I still get pulled back into the story from time to time. When that happens, I lose that wonderful sense of joy and peace until I let go of the thoughts that had interested me for a bit. The difference is so extreme that I usually turn to the Holy Spirit very quickly. Sometimes I go through a period of healing in which a particular belief shows up repeatedly in different forms. This continues to happen until it is healed. It's not very comfortable, <laughs> but it is easier now and it does go more quickly. I have not reached the state Jesus talks about as being without illusions, of course, but I can attest to what he says. Even this partial healing that I experienced is simply wonderful. Paragraph four, when truth has come, it does not stay a while to disappear or change to something else. 
It does not shift and alter in its form, nor come and go and come again. It stays exactly as it always was to be depended on in every need and trusted with a perfect trust in all the seeming difficulties and the doubts that the appearances of the world presents in gender. They will merely blow away when truth corrects the errors in your mind. You know, it seems for the most part, we achieve this state slowly as we allow our mind to be healed of ego beliefs. We come closer and closer to experiencing what it is like to no longer be bound to our belief in the ego. Paragraph five, when truth has come, it harbors in its wings the gift of perfect constancy and love, which does not falter in the face of pain, but looks beyond it steadily and sure. Here is a gift of healing, for the truth needs no defense and therefore no attack is possible. Illusions can be brought to truth to be corrected, but the truth stands far beyond illusions and cannot be brought to them to turn them into truth. The process I used to heal my mind and still use is what Jesus describes for us. He tells us to notice our thoughts and to give them to the Holy Spirit for healing. This is our only part. The Holy Spirit does the rest and we need only accept it. It is so simple that anyone can do it. The reason it took me years to do this was that for a long time, I treasured my specialness. But as I kept at it, more beliefs fell away. The peace that replaced the specialness convinced me of what I really wanted. Another error that stood in my way was the desire to use the course as a self-help book that corrected the world rather than my mind. This is not the correction we need and is just another time-consuming error that leads nowhere. Finally, I figured this out and I stopped trying to bring the truth to my illusions. Instead, I laid the illusion at the feet of truth and let it be transformed. Sometimes it was simply removed from my mind altogether. This is now a daily practice for me. Paragraph six, truth does not come and go nor shift nor change in this appearance now and then in that evading capture, escaping grasp. It does not hide. It stands in open light in obvious accessibility. It is impossible that anyone could seek it truly and would not succeed. Today belongs to truth. Give truth its due and it will give you yours. You are, you were not meant to suffer and to die. Your father wills these dreams be gone. Let truth correct them all. Paragraph seven, we do not ask for what we do not have. We merely ask for what belongs to us that we may recognize it as our own. Today, we practice on the happy note of certainty that this has been born of truth. That has been born of truth. The shaky and unsteady footsteps of illusions are not our approach today. We are as certain of success as we are sure we live and hope and breathe and think. We do not doubt we walk with truth today and count on it to enter into all the exercises that we do this day. We all can and will do this. Why wait? Why continue to suffer when happiness is possible right now? The forgiveness process, if used consistently, will make room for the truth. It is right there in the mind always. It has gone nowhere and does not change in appearance. The truth is obvious. And we can have it at any time, but we cannot see the illusion and the truth at the same time. That is why forgiveness is necessary first. Let truth correct all ego thoughts and dreams will disappear. Let us approach our exercises today with confidence born of truth. It is not hard to do this because we are not asking for something out of our reach. The truth is already ours. It's certain. We can happily do this simple work today. Paragraph eight. Begin by asking him who goes with you upon this undertaking, that he be in your awareness as you go with him. 
you're not made of flesh and blood and bone, but we're, were created by the self same thought, capital T thought, which gave the gift of life to him as well. He is your brother, and so like to you, your father knows that you are both the same. It is yourself you asked to go with you. And how could he be absent where you are? And in that sentence where he says yourself, it's with a capital S, it is yourself, your true self, you, go, you asked to go with you. And of course, how could he be absent where you are? So today, let us ask the Holy Spirit to be in our awareness as we move ever closer to knowing ourselves as we are. We're not human beings, bodies, each separate from the other. We are thought in the mind of God, as is all of creation. We have nothing to fear and no reason to doubt our success. Paragraph nine, truth will correct all errors in your mind, which tell you you could be apart from him. You speak to him today and make your pledge to let his function be fulfilled through you. To share his function is to share his joy. His confidence is with you as you say, truth will correct all errors in my mind and I will rest in him who is myself. Then let him lead you gently to the truth which will envelop you and give you peace so deep and tranquil that you will return to the familiar world reluctantly. All those thoughts that tell us we have reason to fear, reason to be guilty, that the guilt we project, project onto others is justified, that the rage and depression and all the other feelings we experience as we accept the ego as real can be easily corrected. We just call on ourselves and let his function be fulfilled through us today. The fear I had for my dear one who was sick is something I released to the Holy Spirit. And in return, he corrected that error in my mind and led me to the truth. He gave me peace so deep and tranquil that I did return to the familiar world reluctantly. Paragraph 10, and yet you will be glad to look again upon this world for you will bring with you the promise of the changes which the truth that goes with you will carry to the world. They will increase with every gift you give of five small minutes and the errors that surround the world will be corrected as you let them be corrected in your mind. Isn't that just amazing? <laughs> what an amazing thing to know. Paragraph 11, do not forget your function today. Each time you tell yourself with confidence, truth will correct all errors in my mind. You speak for all the world and him who would release the world as he would set you free. So let us today be mindful of our purpose. When we speak for the truth, we do not speak only for ourselves. We speak on behalf of the sonship and all are blessed as we do so. We are all set free. So thank you so much for sharing this lesson with me and thanks for watching my video. And if, if you found it helpful, please like it. And if you haven't yet, uh, subscribe. And I'll be back tomorrow with another lesson.